Before I start this commentary, I just want to say I'm sorry to everyone that I backlashed on the Machine Community video. I should not have replied to the trolls, and I should not have been so mean to people. I apologize for my behavior, and I won't have it again. Hopefully not, so let's get on to the video. Hello everyone, my name is James Clem. You're watching the Rain Director's Commentary, where I talk about things about Rain Segment 1, give my answers on certain questions that were uh, asked in the video, and uh, I pretty much tell you everything that happens in Rain Segment 1 and people were confused. So this is kind of like a spoiler video, and if you haven't seen the mission of mine, I'm probably going to go watch it if you haven't seen it already. But anyway, here we go. So the first reference right off the bat is the Thousand Sunny Greenhouse. That's a reference from One Piece. So first, I'm actually uh, uploading this video in 720p because there's no reason for me to upload a massive 1080p file and it's much quicker. So anyway, yeah, uh, Rain Segment 1, opening scene. Uh, this is actually a dream sequence because later on, uh, Nikki disappears into um, nothing. And uh, yeah, there's rain effects, obviously. I'm trying to get everything answered in this video because I have stuff written down. So uh, next up is rain masking. Uh, rain masking or just rain effects, you know, rain effects outside and the masking is where there's rain in the background while the thing's moving. It was so hard to do because, I mean, if it was a still shot, it'd be easy because all I have to do is just mask rain in the background and nothing's moving as it works. But since the camera's moving, I have to keep like adjusting the the like like the box because normally if I went to like the After Effects, if I didn't touch that thing in the background, the rain would be going to the uh, the rain mask and would be following the camera shot. So I had to move it all over the place. That was hard. <laughs> um, so in the first scene, we have a girl who says Tom, and the guy replies Tom, and then she replies to his uh, answer. Uh, people were confused who was who. So I set up camera angles and scenes in the machinima to tell people who's who so the girl's like tom and then the guy responds yes so now we know that that guy with the black visor his name's tom and we know what he sounds like so at, so at that point i figured hey we know who's who we still don't know who the girl is but we know who tom is and the rain title uh, rolls in the second reference coming up is the stray sheep which is a reference from Catherine, and the music even plays from Catherine. so i thought that was pretty neat and uh, I put I like to put stuff in rain that you really wouldn't expect. And in that scene, I'm going to say right now, it's a stripper and the guy's masturbating. Um, so I wanted to put stuff in rain that you wouldn't normally expect. That's funny, and it kind of adds to the type of humor I enjoy. And there's a lot of pointless drama, which I do like. So in this scene, we have two people, to, or we have one person talking, don't know who's who. There's Tom again. We know who Tom is. And then the guy turns his head. He's still talking. So maybe he's maybe he is that voice. And then we see him turn turn his head. Maybe he's that voice. And then Tom replies and all that crap. Um, I sir, I, I I set up different angles to tell people who's who. And sometimes we'll have a scene like this where it's only him in the shot and he'll be talking. And then he responds. And then he responds. So I so now we know who's who. We we don't know their names yet. But we know that the guy with the blue visor has the kind of uh, Australian voice, and the guy with the Mark V has the type of gruff, buff voice, I guess. Um, so voice actors, uh, we have Tori Kama, who voice acts Tom Rain. We have uh, Higher Octane, who voice acts the Mark V guy. His name's Aaron. Uh, and then we have... Well, I'm have voice Ted, which is the Australian guy. Pikus TV is the third reference. It's from Deus Ex, Human Revolution. It's an area in the game where you have to go fight the second boss. This guy's hair is Douglas, who voices the radio guy. The camera guy is voiced by Adam Merlin Cook. Uh, these guys actually don't have any point in the story. They're just there. Uh, I guess it adds to the pointless humor. And, uh, yeah, he says a bunch of references, like Red vs. Blue references. And that right there was performed by Digital Virus. It's wet and windy. That's actually a reference to Family Guy, where uh, they go like, Hey, what's the weather? And he's like, It's wet! And then they go back to the guy. So, yeah. Um, so let me go back to the scene. Tom's all like, Ugh. Tom's not depressed. He's just, uh, very calm, I guess. This is Aaron. And right here we say, this is Aaron. So now we know that his name's Aaron. Uh -oh. So he's Aaron. We don't know the other guy's name yet, but we know who he is. And, uh, in this scene, I, I, I put people in the background just to show that it's more populated. Of course, they they have no role in it. And, and of course, if, if you look really closely, you can see that, yes, there's rain coming on Tom's top of his helmet, but... Nothing's perfect, and it was so hard to do these scenes because they keep going up and down because that's how the models work. And it was so annoying to do that, especially for Tom. You have to get like a little every bit of angle. 
Somewhere in space is the next scene. People told me that I should cut out the space scenes, but I didn't want to because, like I said, it adds the pointless humor. Why is it there? It, it had no reason to be there. It, it, it's like that movie. I forget what it's called. Um, it, it, It's where the uh, Black Knight gets its arm cut off, and then the guy's, like, looking down. I just cut off your arm. He's like, no, it's, you did. It's just a flesh wound. And it's so ridiculous, but it's so funny at the same time, which is what I want these scenes to be like. Why is this guy here? Why is his head on fire? No one knows. He just accepts it. Like the guy, like the Black Knight. Oh, my hand got cut off. Who gives a crap? The guy, guy's head's on fire. Yeah, it's on fire. Oh, well. So it kind of adds to the pointless humor, which I enjoy. Um, yeah, so what is Rain? Uh, a lot of people wanted to know what type of genre Rain is. And I don't classify Rain as a com comedy or a drama. I said it, it's an interesting plot with interesting characters. And what I mean by that is, I mean, by interesting, I don't mean like amazing plot, although I would like it to be an amazing plot. Um, by interesting, I mean, well, I don't know, really know what's going on, but I'm interested to seeing what it is about, or if this looks kind of interesting. You know, I, I use the word interesting very lightly. It could mean anything. I'm not seeing the plot as good or bad. You're just wanting to know what it is. And then the characters is the same thing. You want to know who the characters are. And with... Um, the Lamu cast performance, the guy in the CQB helmet, uh, I'll show you on the screen when he pops up. <sighs> right there, the guy who jumps up. Uh, his name's Ted, by the way. And um, people uh, call them the comedic relief character because in some scenes later on, he acts ridiculous and kind of flips out in a normal way. And people would classify him as a comedic relief character. I don't classify Ted as comedic relief. I classify Ted as Ted. That's how he acts. That's his character. That's what he's based on. And just because he flips out in certain scenes doesn't really make him a comedic relief character. So I don't classify this machine as a comedy at all. And we go back to the dream sequence, and the girl's still talking, and Tom is walking towards them. We still don't know what the girl's name is, but we know what her, what she sounds like. Not to mention, she's the only freaking girl in the show, so it can be kind of obvious to who, who's who. Um, yeah, so Rain is an interesting character with interesting, interesting plot with interesting characters. Um, it's not a comedy, and it's not a drama. It's just something that I made up. Um, it's a unique machinima where unique things happen, and you wouldn't expect to see, you know, sex and dildos in a machinima, and that's in rain. So Tom wakes up in his apartment from uh, a dream. Notice the date. It's September 12th, and the bar scene was September... Uh, I mean, it's September 16th, and the bar scene was September 12th. By the way, this scene was so hard to edit. Oh my god. It was so hard to edit because every second I had to move the damn thing. And if you look really closely... Actually, it was in the previous scene. The ring was in, uh, to the side. Anyway, he steps out of bed. I really like how this scene came out. Um, it looks like he really was sleeping. And I know that people say, oh, why is he wearing armor? And my simple solution is, it's a Halo machinima. I'm not going to explain it because it's a Halo fucking machinima. There's no reason why I need to explain why they're wearing armor unless it's like some weird plot. Um, and by the way, I, I would have changed that scene. Digital Virus told me to change it because it looks like Nikki's, I mean, the girl's dead. I just said her name. Uh, yeah, she responds. And this is where we learn who the girl's name is. Thomas says, I'll see you later, Nikki. Okay, we know who the girl's name is. It's Nikki. So you really, you have to pay attention to who's who. Or unless, because some people said, I don't know who's who. And I'm like, well, I set up different angles to find out who is who. So Nikki is the chick. And by the way, yes, that is a dildo. Yes, she does masturbate. Yes, it is awkward, but whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, which brings me up to my next topic I'm going to talk about, about the dildo scene and the voice actor and how I was kind of embarrassed to give her that. Um, so yeah, uh, and this upcoming scene, I wanted to make rain fall vertically, but as you can see, it's falling, or fall from the sky like a bird's eye view. I didn't know how to do that, so I just did the regular rain to the down. It didn't really look that bad, but... Yeah, uh, I hope everyone liked the soundtrack. I uh, worked really hard to pick out songs. And by the way, I got them off Music Loops. I, I didn't make them. Uh, Music Loops is a royalty-free royalty website. Everyone uses it. It's a great site. It is really pricey if you want to uh, do this type of stuff. But if, if, if you're really into it, then I, I don't think price is that much of a problem. But anyway, this scene, we have Aaron and Ted. And this is where we find out who Ted is. He says, damn it, Ted, pick up your phone. So now we know that he is Ted. Um... And this is uh, adds to the more pointless humor. This is another reference uh, about, um, and in the past, I 
I, I, I don't count it as a date, but I went out with this really weird chick who liked to do really weird things. And when she said, I like to fuck deer, that's not true. Uh, Harris Douglas, which is the radio guy, and he's the set designer of Rain, wanted me to write a story about my terrible night out with the girl and he was going to make it into his own little mini film. I never got around to it because I didn't really want to rewrite what I really wanted to forget. Um, so he told me to come up with some things that were true and I came up with some things that were not true to kind of spice up the story and fucking deer was one of those things I made up. Jesus. Anyway, yeah, uh, sometimes I'm fucked up. But yeah, they arrive at the uh, they arrive at the, the apartment. I'm, I'm trying to think if I actually forgot in a lot of references that I've just been talking about it. Regardless, it's all in the comments. The, the, the Lamu cow knows all the references. You can ask him. Um, so now they hear the music. They're wondering, oh, what the hell is going on? So they go up. And yes, Nikki's in the, Nikki's in the room. And she is having a lot of fun with her toy. And she's blasting music. And this guy is voiced by uh, C.S. Frost, an awesome voice actor of mine. Um, he did Rusher in the Confederacy prologue. And uh, he can do French Canadian and French accents. It's pretty sweet. Um, so yeah. By the way, people like this, like the apartment guy, the, the guy with the flaming head, the radio guy, the camera guy, the guy who screams. Uh, they have no names. They're just there, um, which adds to the more of the pointless humor. There's no reason why they should be there. They're just there, and they have no name or any type of whatever the hell. Anyway, they walk in on Nikki naked, and she screams. She's like, "Oh my God, you saw me naked." And uh, I think we get to learn more a bit more about the characters. You know, Ted gets scarred when he says boobies. Aaron's like, wow, I can't believe you and T uh, Tom are still together. Nikki's like, oh, hey, as in, oh, what's up, guys? And she's fucking broad naked in front of their eyes. And she's like, oh, what's up? And the uh, apartment guy's like, oh, my God, I better get out of here. I, I don't like looking at women, even though I'm not gay. Anyway, uh, Tom goes to the college and uh, he's on Boardwalk, New Alexandria University. I, I could have gave it a weird name, but I didn't really want to make it a weird name. I just said New Alexandria University because it ties in with something that happens later on in the, in the segments. So yeah, he walks in, he uh, parks his warthog. That was actually him like locking his warthog. I don't know if that that worked out, but um, and I do like the pacing between these scenes where it goes from the college to Nikki to the college, Nikki college, Nikki. and um, yeah. I, I, I love it how Ted's just standing there and he's still scarred and then he says boobies and Aaron's like, shut up, shut idiot. Up. But, um, oh yeah, I guess before I uh, uh, lose any time, uh, Amanda Kay is, is the voice actor of Nikki, the chick that was masturbating with the dildo. And I didn't uh, I I didn't want to center the line because like in, in, in the script, it's not worded like that. It's just, oh, Nikki uh, has fun uh, doing this. But I, I don't say why. By the way, why is, he, why is electricity around him? I don't know. It just adds to the pointless humor. Uh, and that, by the way, the presser guy is uh, with the uh, inclement, yeah, inclement weather. Fuck is voiced by Tyler Moore. Um, yeah. So Nikki, uh, I, I, I really didn't want to send a man a K the lines of like, I, I like originally in the script I said, oh, she goes into bed, grabs a dildo and masturbates. She's like, oh, oh, oh. And I'm like, I really didn't want to send that to man K because I didn't want to offend women or her and no offense to women but they some women get offended so easily they really do and you have to be really careful when you do that and um i'm not saying amanda k would get offended because she actually she didn't get offended and she actually knew what the hell i was doing but uh, i i i worded so broadly in the script because i don't want to offend everybody of course when i made the machinima i fucking did it <laughs> but um um here's the funny scene they leave and she looks back at the dildo and then the music starts playing and you can imagine what she does um, so yeah, the next uh, reference is Osborne Graves, which is a reference to the Osborne, Spider-Man, uh, Green Goblin, New Goblin. And they're at a church, per se. They are at a church, or some type of graveyard scene. Hmm, why is that? Uh, and then I, I, I love the quotes by Tyler Moore. This isn't a restaurant, and then he says it again. It just makes me laugh. Um, but yeah, uh, Rain, is, it's about a group of people just talking, but they're interacting with uh, unique locations and it's an interesting plot um i really hope you guys like segment one if you like segment one you're gonna love segment two and before i go one more question i forget who asked this but they asked how come tori Khan was the main guy not you because usually my mission was i voice act the main guy uh i really didn't want did not want to voice anybody in rain i wanted to uh just because in uh, like being a movie director i mean you're not always the main person unless you're that fucking guy who directed that but uh, avatar the last airbender um Midnight Shyamalan, retard. Uh, but anyway, I, I wanted to, you know, have all my voice actors be the main characters, not me, because I'm I'm making it. So why should I be the guy 
with the main character, even though I'm creating Confederacy and I voice that card. But that's not the point. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed segment one. Uh, Tori Kama, Manny K, Higher Octane, Lamu K, everyone who voiced acted in this machinima did an amazing job. You're going to love segment two. Trust me, it is fucking awesome. And segment three is going to be sweet too. So stay tuned for more rain. I hope you guys enjoyed the commentary. See you people in the next video.